This is part two of our three-part series on fluoroquinolone antibiotics. This segment covers the sections in Dr. Pieper's book on collagen disorder, musculoskeletal damage, neurotoxicity, and neuropathy. Can you elaborate on the sort of uh, collagen damage that you've been witnessing in your several hundred patients that you've, you've now been seeing and talking to? Yeah, sure. Thank you, Zara. Well, um, I think one of the most dangerous side effects um, uh, is the collagen damage of the blood vessels. And um, uh, the most known disorder here is the aortic aneurysm. Mm -hmm. And um, there, there is a, a huge number of patients dying from aortic aneurysm. Which is heart, um, heart problems if people not familiar with that word aortic we are talking about the heart this is this is not this is sometimes the heart but most mostly um, the abdominal aorta which is the the biggest um, vessel the the biggest arterial vessel in the body mm -hmm. um, it's thick as a as a thumb really oh, wow. um, and um, there's a high pressure in there because it's an arteria and um, if the vessel, the blood vessel, the, the, the wall of the vessel mm -hmm. is not able to hold this pressure anymore, then there, um, there is a, an, an aneurysma building. So uh, the mm -hmm. blood vessel becomes bigger and bigger and in the end it bursts. And um, this um, is um, connected with a high risk of, um, of death, of course. And mm. another patient of mine um, who is only 45, um, uh, she has had uh, a fluoroquinolone treatment um, around 15 years ago, mm -hmm. and was fine with that all the time, didn't suffer. Uh -huh. um, but after 15 years, she had a, a stroke because uh, she had a dissection of the vertebral arteria, which is really, really a rare thing. I have never wow. heard about that before, but um, I'm quite sure that is connected to the fluoroquinolone she took 15 years ago, because it mm. takes a long time for the artery vessel, for the artery wall mm -hmm. to really develop a dissection or even an, an aneurysm. Oh, right? That's really interesting. I was not aware of that. I thought if you had a problem, it would happen right away. So you're saying mm -hmm. it could be a process. That's that's um, years and years. It, it takes years. That's really eye-opening, yeah. really. Oh my yeah. gosh. So mm -hmm. people who have, who have systemic severe fluoroquinolone damage, I guess they really need to pay attention to cognitive problems or what would you say this is what you need to look out for that might be a hint that well, this is starting to happen every patient, yeah every patient i have every fluoroquinolone patients i have who is older than 50 mm -hmm. or has high blood pressure or other risk huh. factors um i do an ultrasound um okay. an abdominal ultrasound on him and see how the aortic wall is looking so if one has low blood pressure does that mean anything or not really no, no. High, wow. high blood pressure is a is a high is a high risk factor yeah for just more risk. developing uh, uh arterial diseases and mm -hmm. if, there, if there are risk factors for arterial diseases like mm -hmm. uh old age or high blood pressure cholesterol levels things like that mm -hmm. then then uh, you have to look uh, with fluoroquinolone poisoning you have to look for the um for the aortic wall so yeah. the other areas of collagen so i think in that part one we talked about you're gonna one would start having a lot of skin uh in our in the community we all ha seem to have had the same problems where the skin is hanging off our hands off mm -hmm. our inner thighs off our jowls at any age that's um, right that's right and hanging off your ankle area it's mm -hmm. very weird Mm. And we all have the same pictures. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's frightening yeah. because you're you're aging 20, mm. 30 years in a matter of how many you think in a couple of months usually that mm. shows up. I think. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is because uh, we all know that there is a lot of collagen um, 
in the skin and beneath the skin, mm -hmm. uh, which we need yeah. to have um, to have a, a good tension in the skin. Uh, so yeah. if we lose this collagen, um, then the skin is getting old and the skin is getting dry as well. Mm -hmm. The eyes, the yeah. eye lesions, the eye lesions, there uh, are uh, lots of different um, floaters. Uh, the dark. Um, yeah. yeah, there's there are the floaters for uh, of course, um, but also um, there can be a damage to the damage to the eye itself, and mm -hmm. um, so um, the eye in the eye th there are uh, lots of different um, collagen uh, tissues which can be damaged. Mm. Yeah, yeah, we've seen a lot of that. It's really mm -hmm. sad. Um, and also, you know, people also would get maybe, you know, when you get cut, your wounds aren't healing or they take weeks to heal. So that's another indication. Um, that money that's another indication. Through. That's right. Your, your skin's not healing. You're getting, um, so the collagen's, you know, damaging your, your joints, your yeah. cartilage. Not, not only um, the skin lesion, Sarah, but... Um, also, what is a, a huge problem? Um, uh, the the Cypro or other uh, fluorocannabinol drugs uh, were used a lot with um, diverticulitis. Diverticulitis yes. is uh, is a is a condition where the bowels are inflammated, and you need antibiotics. Mm -hmm. um, um, because there is there are little diverticles little uh, sacs in the your, yeah yeah um, so you have to treat that um, with a, with an antibiotic treatment mm -hmm. and they they used to to give uh, a lot of cypro um, for mm -hmm. a couple of years for decades actually and then um some of these patients and uh, a, a big number of these patients has to has to have surgery afterwards, bowel surgery, colon yeah. surgery. And then um, because of the fluorocannabinol um, damage to the collagen, um, these, um, this tissue, this bowel tissue, this colon tissue won't heal. Oh. And, and this is really very, wow. very, very dangerous um, yeah. and life-threatening, life you know? I have had a patient who did this surgery uh, with a with a specialist um, and um, he a young patient and afterwards he was on ICU for six weeks because mm. um, because it wasn't healing. Yeah, know. exactly. So you don't have that and, capacity to heal. And <laughs> another issue is uh, are the hernias. Uh, so mm. there is uh, mm. quite often there are inguinal hernias. Internal. Um, okay. Yeah, and the inguinal hernias uh, is, is this is also a um, a collagen issue. Oh, because... I didn't know that. That's really interesting. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and oh. of course the tendon and the joint damage. And um, this we we have mentioned Achilles tendon a lot Achilles now. Achilles tendon, yeah. 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 But um, this is not the only tendon in the no. body which is involved. Every single tendon in your body can be involved. Mm -hmm. um, the shoulders, the feet, the knee, um, um, everywhere. Why are doctors and patients not connecting the dots to the medication and all these issues that start to happen? Uh, these, this kind of syndrome um, is um, where we have got that this this topic and this syndrome since uh, since the 80s and i have no idea why doctors are not connecting the dots as you say yeah. um, because you know if if a 55 year old patient comes in the um, in the emergency room with chest pain um, and a history of blood pressure and uh, mm -hmm. and and he says his dad uh, has died with a heart attack with in, in the age of 50, then every doctor in the yeah. world would think of a heart attack. Every yeah. doctor in the whole True. world would think of it, even a dermatologist yeah. or whatever. So um, why it is so difficult to think of fluorokinolone toxicity when you hear 
well, there is nerve damage and there is collagen damage and there is um, a, a fatigue syndrome involved. So this yeah. is a trias, we call it trias. There are three really important symptoms there. Okay. Uh, every doctor in the world should think of fluorocanolone mm -hmm. toxicity, of course. You know, and, and I think a lot of doctors um, really don't think about prescriptions that people are on and, the, and those side effects. The section of your book that has a bit of complex biology for the average listener, um, uh, I guess it was kind of what we're talking about, um, is the collagen. Can you give me a brief overview of how maybe how is this collagen damage sort of taken place within the tendons mm -hmm. and the inflammation? Um, yeah. And how is like the magnesium depletion affecting that? Can you shine a light on that a little bit? Usually tendons in the body is such, such a strong material, yeah. such strong tissue that it won't, um, there yeah. won't be tears wow. and, uh, and they, they won't rupture the li in a lifetime. In mm -hmm. 80 or 100 years, they won't rupture. Uh, so why do they uh, rupture after three days of uh, Cypro? Mm -hmm. um, that's a good question. And um, fortunately, there is an answer to that because uh, there is an enzyme in our body. This enzyme is called matrix metalloproteinase. Uh, I don't know. How MMPs, it is. I think. MMP, MMP. Yeah. Uh, um, the, the, this is a whole group of enzymes, actually, and uh, two of them, MMP2 and 9, um, they get rid of degraded collagen. So mm -hmm. if, uh, if collagen is old, is getting old, then these enzymes try to get rid of it. Yeah. Um, um, and, and flush it out of your body. Exactly. And yeah. so uh, is an important function of this enzyme. Um, fluorquinolones um, are going to activate this enzyme system and these activated enzymes are now looking for um, damaged collagen. Mm -hmm. And if there is no collagen damaged in your body, they try to, to look at collagen which seems to be a little bit damaged. Mm -hmm. And this is in a... In a um, in somebody doing a lot of of uh, jogging it's it's probably the achilles tendon achilles. And, and in the tennis player it is the shoulder the tennis and, elbow <laughs> huh? tennis, we call it tennis elbow here we damage tennis your elbow, elbow playing tennis shoulder elbow exactly yeah. or in an elderly patient who is 75 and has got damaged arterias there is probably the, butt, the blood vessel and the aortic wall um, uh, is, uh, is getting attacked from these enzymes. Um, so uh, different tissues um, are going to be damaged because of these um, activated enzymes then. Okay. And uh, this can happen very, very fast, mm. you know, with a healthy young person taking Cypro, um, you could have a ruptured tendon after three or four days yeah. uh, um, of, of taking Cypro. It's, yeah. it's really a very, very dangerous drug for that. Yeah. yeah. Yes, uh, many of us have had multiple tears and it's, it's a horrible process to keep going through. Um, you mentioned that one of the diagnostic tests you perform is testing the levels of hydroxyproline um, the, the reduced tendon elasticity is one of our biggest problems, as we're as we're saying. You know, mm -hmm. so you actually can't even you're not even able to stretch very well, or, or or your muscles are so tight you just can't get that normal feeling mm -hmm. that you used to get um, yeah. in, in that muscle, and mm -hmm. then it's going to lead to the tearing and the the, re, the relapses in physical strength and progress. Um, a lot of people are trying collagen powders among other outpatient procedures here in America and probably there too, mm -hmm. that are not mm -hmm. usually used in Western medicine mm -hmm. treatments. Um, you mentioned an informal patient trial you did. Uh, the collagen dosage probably needs to be quite high. 
um, grass-fed cows with certification that they've not had any antibiotics, no fluoroquinolones. Um, uh, mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that? What brand do you use? I don't know what, you know, I know a lot of people in the community are trying collagen and some, you know, we all are not sure, you know, is it helping? Is it not helping? What is your thought behind that as, as somebody who can't go get all this testing and help done? Is that, is that something that's going to be worthwhile of them starting to get on and what kind of dosage are we looking at? Yeah. Well, I mean, um, to start with, with um, you have to know that your collagen system, your damaged collagen system, uh, wants to um, regenerate and wants to heal all the time. Mm. Um, uh, every second of the day, it wants to get into this healing process. And okay. it does, really. It really yeah. does. But um, for the collagen system to get to get better, it needs some materials and compounds um, to to start the healing process. Mm -hmm. And uh, most important are these amino acids, which are very, very important for the collagen system, which is, for example, hydroxyproline, mm -hmm. um, which the um, system needs for elasticity. elasticity. Mm -hmm. So um, probably almost every patient I hear says that um, he or she can hear uh, the the tendons and the joints crackling yeah. while moving, you yeah. know. And and this is really uh, one one mother of a child who who got um, the fluoroquinolone during breastfeeding. She mm. said to me, she can hear the crackling of the tendons in her newborn child and this is probably a problem of um of a low hydroxyproline level because mm -hmm. there are some studies that shows that um that proline um is not uh, that with uh, uh, fluoroquinolones in the system the body is or the cell is not able to hydroxylize proline mm. to hydroxyproline oh, yeah. So the cell is not able to produce hydroxyproline. Mm -hmm. And both of them, proline and hydroxyproline, are very important for the collagen system. So yeah. from my point of view, you can't do anything wrong in taking these two amino acids, even mm -hmm. if we don't know how good the cell is using this yeah. stuff while you are eating it. But Yeah, a lot of controversy here in this exactly. country about it. <laughs> But, you know, but on the other hand, you you can't do any harm with, no. with um, you know, eating uh, a bone broth uh, soup uh, every second day, or mm -hmm. to have to to to, to um, have some protein powder um, at the end of the day. You know, so um, I take um, I recommend five grams um, of uh, this powder. Um, which contains um, 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 one to ten percent of hydroxyproline, mm -hmm. which is not very much, but I recommend it anyway. Um, and if you give it every single day, then there is uh, a lot of hydroxyproline going around in the mm -hmm. system, and probably enough to be used for the regeneration. You know. Is that a straight collagen powder that you're purchasing in Germany, or is it just amino acids, or what? Because I have well, tried looking up hydroxyproline. You can't buy it individually. No, you can't. You can't. At all. But, and so. and this is not a good idea anyway. You okay. can <laughs> you can have a mixture of amino acids made mm -hmm. of of um, cow products. Um, so um, grass feed cows. Grass fed cows, uh, yeah. It's very important. It has to be organic. It's at least Correct. 500 yeah. milligrams of vitamin C um, because vitamin C is a very important cofactor mm -hmm. for the for the building of a new collagen tissue. To move on to your next chapter, the neurotoxicity and neuropathy. Um, 
as the references included in your book state, 65% uh, of fluoroquinolone side effects involve peripheral nervous system, 30% of those being neurological. Mm -hmm. uh, can you expand on what you've been seeing with your patients regarding, regarding this? Mm -hmm. Well, this is really a sad story, I have to say, because mm -hmm. um, lots of patients are suffering from neuropathies mm -hmm. um, after taking um, Cypro or fluoroquinolones. And <clears throat> it is well known that uh, fluoroquinolones are neurotoxic. Uh, there's... there's um, no discussion about that, really. No. No. And but on the other hand, um, if these patients goes to, go to a neurologist, um, he will he will do his examinations on them, and in ninety percent of the cases, he will say, "Well, there is nothing to find. Go home. It's all mm -hmm. in your head." Mm -hmm. So, um, but. Um, there is a condition called small fiber neuropathy. Mm -hmm. And this small fiber neuropathy is probably the one which is um, the, the um, um, <clears throat> which, which has the, the, the most, the biggest impact in fluoroquinolone toxicity. Okay. And small fiber neuropathy, you can't detect with the usual examinations yeah. the doctor the neurologist does in his practice yeah. so so you have to do a skin puncture you have to do a skin biopsy um, from my patients i think more than 80 percent of these patients have got a small fiber neuropathy which is a huge number if you if you have in mind that New, small fiber neuropathy is a very, very rare neurological condition. Mm. I wasn't aware of that. Mm. Yeah. So what I'm doing at the moment, or we are doing, uh, um, with together with a with a medical student who is um, as well uh, intoxicated with fluoroquinolones, and he's studying in Zurich in Switzerland, mm. and together we do a, a small study. Um, to to get to know the neurological society um, about these issues about yeah. the, well because it is not known really you know so um, mm -hmm. the neurologic the neuro neurologists have to know that this is a big problem and a big issue in uh, in fluoroquinolone toxic intoxicated persons and they have to look for small fiber neuropathy mm. because small fiber neuropath neuropathy is not only the condition um, which explains the burning feet or the or the, the 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 huge pain they are in mm -hmm. but also um the small fibers um are regulating the heartbeat and your stomach and your bowel movements and um, the body dry temperature, is it, it also affects body temperature, body temperature as yeah. well, or, or um, if your eyes are sore and dry or not, mm -hmm. and your mucous membranes and your mouth everywhere. Yeah. Um, so this the, um, is, um, is a kind of out, the, the autonomic nerve system, nervous system um, um, uh, is, is um, actually uh, lots of small fibers are regulating this nerve system. Mm, right? Yeah. So, and lots of my patients have got um, gastric emptying problems, and yeah. they've got uh, they they have they've got sweat problems and dry skins and dry eyes and dry mouth. they're not they're not sweating. Yeah. And yes, and heartbeat palpitations, heartbeat. Yeah. Uh, and things like that. And I think this is all due to uh, a, an, an autonomic small fiber neuropathy. Yeah. And there are um, some universities in Germany um, who do a very, very good um, diagnosis on that mm -hmm. patients. Um, so um, there's no doubt that this is a, a big problem in the uh, 
in the um, toxicity profile of of the fluorocannabinoids. Yeah, and it's really and, hard um, to get a doctor to do those <coughs> tests because it's, it's just so frustrating. Yeah, absolutely. It's just, it's just really it's it's even for me it's it's so hard to get my patients to a doctor who does the skin function for mm, me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So because um, is it is not really well known under neurologists as mm -hmm. well. Oh, this this is a condition which is quite new. Um, small fiber neuropathy. Um, well, ten years ago, nobody knew about really? it. Really? Wow. The neurologist, the neurologist thinks uh, he has done everything he can. Mm -hmm. uh, they even do MRI scans and things like that, and looking for multiple sclerosis and things like that. Yeah. Um, so they really want to to know what's what's wrong with the patient. You know, mm -hmm. so, um, but they are not thinking of uh, small fiber neuropathy. Mm. A lot of colleagues of, of neurologists who said, well, even if we, if we have this diagnosis, mm -hmm. what, what good does it do? Yeah. You know? And, yeah. um, but there is actually a paper from the, uh, so, from the German Society of Neuro Neurology, uh -huh. it's only a couple of years old. And this paper says that there is a new medicament against small, and they recommend that a new me medicament against small fiber neuropathy symptoms. It's called lacosamide, lacosamide probably in English. Mm. Uh, which is a bit similar to gabapentin or pregabalin. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, it's this class of medication, but it works really well. Um, I give it to lots of patients with small fiber. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't work in every case. It maybe 50% gets better, mm. but this is a huge number um, considering that uh, there is no other help uh, really around mm. um, in in the in in pharmaceutical terms because yeah. gabapentin and pregabalin uh, they they don't work and mm. and anything natural really help the nervous system yeah there's opinion? a lot there's a lot you can do really yeah. <clears throat> um, to start with there is lipoic acid which is really a wonderful Al alpha wonderful. lipoic acid or which one alpha, alpha lipoic acid okay yeah. Mm -hmm. Alpha lipoic acid is AI. really, I mean, uh, 15 years ago or 20 years ago, we used to give that in the hospital for mm. for um, neuropathies as well. And now and they stopped doing that all of a sudden. <laughs> they stopped, yeah, they uh. stopped doing that, but it still is a, a pharma, pharmaceutical drug in Germany, so you oh, can okay. buy this, it. Um, it's not here, we can get that. In any shop, we can get that in yeah. a, a health food grocery store here. Yeah, yeah, and it's really helpful because it not only uh, protects the nervous system, mm -hmm. but uh, also um, uh, uh, kind of um, um, boosts the um, glutathione system as well. Mm -hmm. So it has got uh, a lot uh, different positive effects in okay. the cell. You know, yeah. it's a it's actually, it's not a pharmaceutical drug, but it exists in the body. Mm -hmm. The lipoic acid, the body is producing it as well. You yeah, know? we're yeah. just getting a bigger dosage. Do you think, yeah. if, if so if one is floxed going on nine or 10 years out, still having fluoroquinolone damage, do you think that uh, a lot of these supplements are things you just have to stay on for the rest of your life? If no, like, no, not, you don't not think really. so? No. No, I if don't you're think like 90% so. better, you think you can you can uh, cut back on some of that or? Yeah, you can. And if it doesn't work, then you have to take it uh, for a longer period. Yeah. But you can always try to to get to get to reduce the dosage. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, uh, alpha lipoic uh, acid or uh, there's another stuff called benfotiamine. Mm -hmm. which is a special vitamin B1 One, yeah. um, um, or uridine monophosphate is very good. Mm -hmm. And all this, uh, these, all these remedies are not really a toxic. So mm -hmm. you can take them for years and yeah. years. 
you like, you know. Yeah. Part three of this three-part interview series continues via the linked video. To contact Dr. Pieper and our foundation, see the direct links in the description below. Please like this video, subscribe to our channel, and follow us on our Facebook group where we post weekly science-based articles related to fluoroquinolone antibiotics. Leave us a comment and with any questions you might have, and thanks for watching.